Okay, bra. Hello. Aloha. Let's do this thing. Yeah. Surf's up. How was surf today? It was a great uh, time, you know. Went down to my home break, took their beach park. I'm telling you. And uh, got some waves before I started the day. The waves were flat. So. My boy yeah. Seth here, local, local surfer, took me out once. I didn't do so hot, but. Yeah, you, you actually teacher. got into the wave. And, <laughs> I got into know, the wave. Belly surfed it. I belly surfed off, it. The wave was too short. So. Yeah. So, yeah, so anyways, um, we're wanting to talk with Seth and, and just, we've had a month together, living together. You want to show the, the facilities here? So this is a... This is Batman. Yeah, that's Batman. And this is the outdoor kitchen. Hi, Batman. And the bus we stayed in. Yeah, so the outdoor... lots of time making meals and... The bus. Uh, doing life. The outdoor shower. The, this center point on the property where we were all living. And so, yeah, so in the last month, we've had a lot of time to get to know each other, and it's been a totally mm -hmm. amazing blessing for Rebecca and I to get to know Seth and um, just learn about each other's lives and come together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so, Seth, you've shared a lot of your story, and like, we kind of want to, <clears throat> you know, have you, um, I don't know, maybe you could, maybe you could kind of share how you, what was happening in your life before you came to the Lord, and and we're transformed and, and, and just, uh, yeah, just take yeah. it from, from there. Yeah, give all the glory for that and uh, for opening my eyes to the knowledge of the truth and uh, Amen. being Amen. able to be reformed in my mind and in my heart. And this it felt good to recognize the truth about life and where I'm going to end up going, you know. There's a purpose, there's a destination, there's a plan. And God... Who sold up the world? He was only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And uh, to know that and have that eternal security it was really good. That I was lost, but now found. You know, Amen. God, God brought, drew me out not of my own strength. It was the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. You know, it's through faith in Christ. And God's, you know, foreordination on me and his, so his cool. plan, his plan. He made me in the mother's womb and he birthed me into the world at the perfect timing. And I'm here trying to figure it out. And then he came and rescued me and showed me I'm the way, the truth, the life. And that was through a series of events that happened in my life throughout the course. Let's say about like... Two years, maybe, like from 2017 to 20, like almost 2019, like the ending of 2018, the beginning of 2017, the ending of 2018. So like almost two years that that series of events took place where I began to experience um, the spiritual aspect of life. Because before I was just like living in Kohala, you grow up with local parents, you know, and the law of God is written on our hearts, whether we believe him or not. Whether we believe in the triune God of the Bible or not, the law of God is established right here in our hearts. We, we have that moral code that we live by. So I was just living that life, you know, morally, you know, just trying to just be a good person, you know, mm -hmm. get good grades in school, pass school. <laughs> and um, my thing was just surfing and smoking weed with my friends, occasionally drink here and there. And, you know, the conversations, you know, in the world weren't always that uplifting. It was just gossip and slander and jealousy and envy and, like, mischief. And just being surrounded by that group of friends. That's how it is growing up in high right, school. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And you just look for a good time and you're just lusting after the flesh, really. And um, when I turned 17, I just decided to really pursue something after high school because school was teaching me you know to make money and like I gotta get a career and that's what life was proclaiming to me like hey I gotta get my things set it up and it's kind of living way through the course of this world and I just basically just wanted to pursue rap hip-hop I found a talent in that my friends were all telling me I'm good at rapping grew up freestyling a lot 
began to develop a skill set of like I wanted, I wanted to rap. You know, I, I'm pretty good at it. I can make good music, and I can rap. So that, that's you even have a, you even have a line from one of your songs about being 17 or right before you're 18. What's that line? And you realizing yeah. something? Yeah, one of my songs, "Pride Is the Devil." I did a remix of J Cole's song pride is, pride is the devil without jesus you can try to pick up all the missing pieces looking for some healing sinful diseases of food and i got now what's the foundation of your thesis i need this yeah. type of empathy times without god yeah i was feeling empty jesus hit the remedy pride be the devil so call on god when he tempt me will i be destroyed 17 years old, I remember chilling with my boys, thinking, Will I be destroyed? When I turned 18, I remember hearing God's voice, yeah. God making my choices, I'm hearing all these voices. The devil on my shoulder tempting me with worldly noises. The Lord is my witness, I'm asking for forgiveness. People be looking at me crazy because I'm walking like a Christian. I was really felt called to, since I know how pride is destruction from God's wisdom, you know self-empowerment, self-pride can really lead somebody astray and away from God and lead you to be selfish. And so I wanted to remix it. So one of my songs was, or one of the lyrics was 17 years old. I remember chilling with my boys thinking, will I be destroyed? Because, you know, back then, you just contemplate about life a little bit because yeah. you when you're high on marijuana. Think about where am I going to go after death? And so you're, you're, like, you're chilling with your boys wondering if you're going to be destroyed. You actually yeah. had that thought? In the sense of like, yeah. where's my life going? Yeah, where's my life going? Like, what choices am I going to make that's possibly going to destroy my life or possibly or make me have more an abundant life in a sense? Right, right. So you're questioning it all. You were yeah, yeah. Like, well, where is this all going? And then 18 years old, that's when I remember hearing God's voice. That was the next lyric bar. And uh, yeah. So how did you hear God's voice? Oh, so that's oh I heard it in L.A. When I graduated high school, I went to go pursue rap in L.A. and I uh, wanted to become a musician, hip-hop producer, artist. And of course, I wasn't rapping all the, the good things. I was rapping about the money, the lust, mm -hmm. the woman. Just, you know, in a worldly sense, looking up to these other artists is like Eminem, Lil Wayne, Drake, and J. Cole in a sense of like taking on what the world wants to hear and proclaiming out of my music and what and so much what I desire. Like I desire to have this, have that, have that, yeah. have yeah. money, have cars, have women. And success. And, and I also had a, a powery message, like I wanted to inspire, not just talk about that, but that was part of the raps that I would talk about. Yeah, yeah. But I also had a message yeah. to inspire. But in a worldly sense I want to inspire them in a worldly sense of like gain this. And just stay motivated and do this. I mean, I'm just an influencer, like, you know, I'm living, like, with these cars and yeah, yeah, and stuff. Because that's just the goal of life, you know, right. in the world. Says. So you're in L.A. and you're pursuing this 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 uh, school in, 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 in the hip-hop. And so, so what was that like? What happens? So I just began to see the demonic side of it, I guess. The, the dark side of it, like, the spiritual side of it in a sense more in the physical realm because I just I really didn't really believe in anything spiritual at the time I just thought life was just life and like materialistic you know, yeah we're just, so, I mean, just a materialism kind of mindset like here we are this is everything is just what yeah, we can obtain like it's not wrong for me to have a bunch of cars and money and women that I like to sleep with like I didn't think of it as wrong because that's just what the world portrays right right and that's just what a manly bodily desires in the flesh right right and uh yeah so god came to me you know i was really in a dark place you know trying to obtain those things like because i just felt like something was missing really depressed and just really sad about life at the time but still using that to motivate me to keep pursuing it but it wasn't filling and uh i guess my heart was so darkened and evil that i wanted it so bad that I wanted to invite spirits. I wanted to get spiritual power and invite spirits in. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So how'd you do? How'd you go about that? I, I, I invited spirits in. I invited the devil in to come and 
help me obtain these things. So what inspired that? Like you didn't believe really in spiritual things? Just, the, did you? Because I, I, I'm, I was watching all these videos about, you know, like how these famous people get where they get. Okay. And like, it was kind of just like thinking, like, huh, what? And what are all these worship signs and what are they worshiping to get there? Right. And I was right. really into that, like, huh. To the point where I almost started worshiping it. Like, I was worshiping it. I would just be like, doing this sign, like, and I'll be like, doing my eye thingy. Yeah. Wow. Like, it's kind of just like, not knowing the devil is true. It's kind of just weird. Yeah. Almost it's like, like, hey, yeah. they're doing it. I'll do it. Maybe there's a power in it, whatever yeah, that is. Exactly. So kind of um, wanting the power, but not understanding it. So then what happens? Yeah. Then I just was like, well, oh, Satan, I'm just going to try and invite him in and see what happens. So there's a specific moment where you invited him in? Like a yeah. Specific... So I started researching it, like how to sell your soul to the devil. And wow. stuff, like for fame, riches, and fortune. And for, and for recognition and to get elevated up in life to be at a certain status. Wow. And uh, I just I just desired that to be a sort of status to be recognized yeah. to, for my talents for my gifts right and just to be an influencer and make money and do what I want in this world sure. <laughs> just to be a king in this world and do what I want that's what I wanted <laughs> and uh, so I just invited him in like laying in my bed one at night late at night just trying to invite these spirits in opening this pathway thinking like I didn't know how it was gonna work I didn't know yes. what what happens. Like how how the devil's gonna work through people to sure make them, but then once I invited him in, kind of realized, oh, this is how he works through people to make them where they are today. It takes, it's, and it's just like an acts of he 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 acts like God in a way where he's gonna come to you and whisper in your ear and change your mindset to like really just achieve, 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 and just. But, but but then also put in evil desires. Of okay, like, so you, like you felt so you felt like motive. There was a motivation happening in you from this. Was yeah, that but what you I said? didn't want to. Then after I did that, I invited the devil in. I realized it was a mistake because I didn't think he would actually show up because I was talking in my room late at night and I was just talking to the air, like laying down in the dark because that's what I read I read online. Like you just lay down in your bed in the dark at night time, be by yourself. Close the door, pitch black, and you know, just talking in the air, manifesting like Satan. If you're real, wow! I want, I want to exchange my soul, and I want you to use me, whatever how you desire, to make me famous and rich and a and a successful hip hop artist. Because I know you're the angel of music, and I know you can offer the world. Wow! So I want to exchange my soul for it in exchange for the world. I'm trying to proposition. And, and then I woke up the next morning, and then demonic spirits showed up. So how? So how? What did you experience? Demonic, like Satan and his little helpers showed up. You know, when I realized now are fallen angels. Did you feel being, them? Or yeah, what? I feel them. I felt their presence. I started like seeing them. Like, oh my goodness! Like, and after that, I just opened the door to where even I'll sleep at night. Like, like I'll get like these hold downs, and like I'll be up, and I'm like seeing these black figures around me. And like, like a bunch of them, like seven of them, eight black figures. Around well, me. so Seth, so and you went from like totally not believing in the spiritual or having any sense of it to to experiencing this yeah. demonic realm, like overnight. Mm -hmm. Wow! Well, and then like I started like seeing like little eyeballs flash before my eyes, little a little Illuminati triangles flash oh, really? behind wow. my eyes. I'm just like, and they they'll be like whispering in my ear. Like I'll be hearing voices now. Like. Telling me I'm chosen, telling me, telling me the devil Come wants to on. help. Telling me the devil wants to help you. And were and you? So what was your? Like, I was spooked out. You were spooked out. Good, yeah. <laughs> um, so so what did you do? What, what was I was kind of like, I mean, what's happening? Wait, oh my goodness, these ghosts are like talking to me. Like these ghosts, these spirits are like communicating with me through my ear, <laughs> and I can hear them like as if it's a real person talking into my ear. Like, the devil wants to help you. Wow. You know I mean? Like in a, in a subtle, like spiritual whisper. Yeah. But, but enough that you're like, this is really happening. Yeah, it's an enhanced where I can hear it, but nobody else can hear yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You're like, okay. And then. So, come on. Then, like, and then I guess it started manifesting in the things I would see in the ground. Like, I would see demon faces and demon faces in the wall, like within like the wood and the carving within the concrete. 
and within like I was eating like I remember eating like a bowl and there was ketchup in there like in the smears of ketchup I was seeing like these demons in the smear oh my of ketchup I was, like, everywhere I'd look I'd just see a demon I'm like what the oh my goodness like, I didn't like going to sleep at night just like so how long did this go on face. for how long did I mean how long did this go on before something changed or you did something I didn't after that I just bowed down on my knees it's like a few days like, later no after... no that same day I think I bowed down on my knees and I just started repenting. Really? Did you even know what repenting was? No, I just recognized my sin. Like, I just, somehow I just, I just knew like, oh, I'm sorry, God. I didn't mean to do this. Like, forgiveness is like, so you, me. So do you feel like in that moment, the realization that there must be a God if there's a spiritual realm, is that what happened? Or? Yeah, the realization of Jesus being oh, wow. in the Bible is being true. The wow. realization of like, oh my goodness, the devil's real Oh, because you've been here. exposed to that throughout yeah. your life at times, right? Yeah. But you just didn't embrace it. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh my goodness, Satan's actually here. Oh, wow. And I just got on my knees and I was like, God, I'm so sorry. My sins started sobbing and weeping. Oh, man. Sobbing over my sin, began repenting, like, I'm sorry, forgive me, Lord, change my heart, show me where I need to go because I do not want to be with the evil one i don't oh, i don't want to work with the evil one i don't want to do his will i want to do your will so here you are in la <laughs> in wherever you live in on the floor repenting yeah and then so then the next morning after i invited satan in the next morning after so you were you had a a day of living in hell with satan showing up yeah in these but then after that i was still kind of living in hell like after i prayed and repented i was sobbing and i realized that was true but i was still like fighting these demons okay so just didn't around. go away yeah but then after that, i started coming back home i just dropped out of college dropped out of that hollywood scene where i was yeah dropped out of that music production course and wow. decided to seek for god I'm like oh yeah i gotta learn about jesus now i gotta wow i gotta learn about him i gotta see what he's about Oh, and then, so the switch, you invited in evil, you repented of evil, you saw, it's like there was like a, a revelation all in a couple days. Yeah. From like, I, I want this power to, I don't want this power, I want the Lord, just like. Yeah, I look yeah. at it like. That's incredible. Yeah, like me dropping out of college was going to put me in some sort of debt, obviously. Because you'd already With the VA, to... with the VA, with the Veterans Affairs. Oh, Okay. But I was just like, there's no way I can care about this right now. Wow. I'm, I'm like, I need to find Christ. I can't care about this. So your this. life just totally <laughs> changed. Just <laughs> like, turned upside down. Yeah. Because I thought I wanted like, oh, I, I got to like pass school or else the, the VA is going to come after me. I got to pay off this debt. But I was just like, I can't care about that right now. I, I got to find Jesus. This is like way too spiritual and way too, like. I gotta, too big. Too yeah, big. it's too big. I got I to gotta go learn about Christ. <laughs> I was like, oh, I gotta go man. learn about him because it just kind of struck my heart and I no longer desire to like pursue that wow. anymore. And then so it probably, it probably was God, you know, when I look back at it. It was like my own forethought, my own knowledge. Okay, I'm gonna fly back to Hawaii and go find a church, and, you know. But it was already God just like, you know, working in my mind and heart to send me back home. That was probably his plan. That's incredible. So flash forward to like today like or you know now this time so now here you are and it's been how many years since you came back from that like three years yeah that was 2018 october 2018 so 22 and so where are you at today in this in this turning from evil walking towards christ trying to find him where are you well, today after those three years where has it brought you to i mean i know you've talked about that maybe. yeah a lot, of, a lot of maturing happened from the christian faith you know a lot, of, a lot of head knowledge came into play and even like a relationship with God came into play with prayer life and how I perceive people and other believers and how I perceive life and what's my pursuit and uh, yeah then like when I first got back got into Mormonism a little bit then like another friend Christian friend came and preached to me about Mormonism and brought me out of that I was deceived by Mormonism a little bit because I didn't know theology right right but then I got out of that because something instinctively in my heart was like okay I hold the word of God as a standard I know the Bible is true I just know it so he started showing me these things in the Bible I'm like okay yeah I I believe that that seems that seems way out there Mormonism so you got some mentoring there. from him yeah then I started getting growing the faith in that way and then nice been a good journey you know then i started learning about what god wants me to do like with with my passion 
because he installs a passion in each and every one of us. And as long as we do it for his glory, it's, it's a fantastic thing. He wants us to use our gifts for his glory. So now I just want to make hip hop, rap music for his glory, worship music for his glory, record it, get it out there, spread a gospel message. And we've heard a lot of Seth's music, and it's really, really good. So um, maybe we can share some of that somehow. Yeah, maybe yeah share. somehow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Put a link in there. Yeah, put it so yeah, I just work at Polo Lude. Um, God has me where he has me. I'm working, save, getting money. And and right now I'm in the stage of like this really spiritual growth. And uh, just fellowshipping and building that relationship side, relationship side with God. Because... I think that's the most important thing to even, before you even go pursue what it is you want to pursue, that you desire, because you, then your heart's always in check when you're pursuing a certain path that you believe that God's calling you, because your heart always has to be aligned with Him when you're pursuing it, and you have to do it with the right motives and intentions. So relationship with Him is very vital. So I'm in that season, you know, working at Polo Lu. Making, which is the music. which is the great uh, hiking spot down to the beautiful beach and cliffs and anybody that comes to the island wants to do that hike down and um, yeah. if you're fortunate, Seth will be there to yeah give, educate, educate you on you can die going down there. So and just making music for God and growing in His wisdom and His word and with other believers being sharpened is great. And mm -hmm. then I'm able to preach the gospel more efficiently when I'm abiding in God's love. That's where I'm abiding right now. And, um, all kinds of, so yeah, Seth's got all kinds of amazing uh, things in his future and um, just super excited to have uh, had this time. I mean, I am, I am so inspired by our time together mm -hmm. and Rebecca's so inspired because we just feel like, man, he is on fire for God. You've seen, you've heard your story mm -hmm. and it's like, it makes me want to go out into the harvest more and and find the 17 year 18 year old version of you that was lost didn't know god didn't know anything about him you know didn't didn't know that there was evil and good you know in, in that truest sense you know yeah it's been on people. fire but it's been a lot of testing too of the faith all trials testing right right you know failures yeah sure but bouncing back to others God is disciplining me because God disciplines who He loves. Yeah, you know what I mean, because so you really gotta abide. And, if, and if your heart starts like wandering off, right. God's gonna discipline you in a in a life event. Yeah, and he's always faithful enough to bring me back. He brings me back where I'm just really crying out. And even if I get comfortable, I still gotta just really cry out to Him, no matter so, where I am. Right. right. So when we fall off of the, of the path you want us on, we repent and we come back, and He's faithful to to, yeah. to strengthen us. Back on There's been a lot of rebuking of, you know, whatever the devil's trying to stop me, you know, because he sees God's working in my life. And he right. Sees me, trying my best to be faithful. So it's a lot of rebuking yeah. in the morning and like saying, no, I'm going to stand up for God today, stand up for Christ. It's a, yeah. it's a mental thing, you know, God wants us to use our minds. Right. Be willing and he's yeah. testing us. Like yeah, and I think what's very powerful too is, you know, because as Christians, you know, you're still fighting spiritual warfare, the devil's still trying to stop Christians from doing God's work. And, you know, when those lies creep in, like, and insecurities, and, like, he tries to feed on into your insecurity, like, oh, you can't love that person, you can't go and love that person, fellowship, you don't connect well, isn't that? But then, that's the type of thoughts that kind of creep in, I'm like, no. And then you gotta rebuke it with truth. That's what I've been doing, it's been very, working very powerfully. So you like, no, God's calling me to love, I need to serve, yeah. I need to love my neighbor, get to know and really just put on the new self and really just love my neighbor. I, I'm not, just because I, I, I'm feeling a certain way, like, like oh, like, uh, you don't connect well with that person, even though they're a believer. Yeah. You can't, no, I can though, I you can, can though, because we're all grafted into the vine, I'm abiding God's love. Yeah, yeah. If you can too, like, you know, those type of lies creep in, but I can't let that. Yeah, so the, the lies of division, or I can't yeah. do this, or I'm not able to connect this person. You can just, you know, that's that's not of that's not of God. He wants us to, yeah, to that, have connection and love. It's like it's the stuff. enemy trying to stop the sharpening. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, he's yeah. trying to stop the sharpening. Yeah, yeah. I'll just and I keep... rebuke it and I pray about it and like God's gonna be able to just like 
put on this sort of, yeah, I'm really good at it. This, this is great. <laughs> but like, you know, talking with the person. Yeah, great. yeah. So you get, then, then you realize, oh, that was a lie. Yeah. And I'm actually, God can give me whatever I need to um, move forward in life and whatever he calls you to, like yeah. good things. Yeah. Like, you know, like with being super social or something or open is, you know, or something, you know. And you just have to feed off of that. You can't do it. You can't do well, it. Hey, after a month with Rebecca and I, I'm sure that's all cured. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding because we, we've engaged so much. No, I'm just, you know what I mean? We sharpen each other, right? Yeah. And being, and I'm just saying you've done that for us too. So it's, we sharpen one another and, um, um, and then God puts the people in each, he put, puts us in each other's lives at different times for different seasons and reasons, you know? Mm -hmm. So he's like, really like my heart needs to be with him all the time because the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing right? there's a scripture there's yeah, a scripture you're fighting that. with that's what paul said the well, flesh is weak but the spirit is willing so we rely on god you know yeah right? rely on god exactly that's why meeting with pastor steve and have our weekly meeting getting into every evening bible study i can it's great <laughs> that's just the life hungry for it it's yeah. just the life because you can go into peace and you're being constantly renewed and yeah who you hang around with is definitely who you become and you hang around with people that are solid in the word and you're going to become more like christ <laughs> that's right that's, awesome. that's right well, thanks seth that was yeah. awesome and uh, thanks rebecca for uh